What goes into growing a prize-winning chrysanthemum? Well, there's a, a lot of patience. It's about a 10-month project from when you take your cuttings. You can go from a, an ordinary little garden chrysanthemum and reproduce it in this form from the same bush. And I, I just think they're, they're a sight to behold and the transformation is absolutely marvellous. So how many varieties do you grow? Currently I grow 45. Very hard to uh, increase that size because we can't bring any more plants into the state because of the quarantine laws. Being the only grower that's still showing in Tasmania, it's uh, up to me at this point in time to, to try and keep them going as long as I can. Can you take us through a few of the varieties? Yes, well, I grow a, a range of varieties. Um, staying with the anemones here, which are a, a very small plant, uh, the, these ones here you see here behind us here are, are decks, what they call decoratives. Uh, the ones here and, and the large purples are the large variety. Um, over this side we've got uh, fantasies. I also grow uh, what they call singles. Yep. A, a, a small button in the middle and the petals going out at right angles from the button. But that's basically the main varieties I grow. In 2017, Jim was the chrysanthemum king. He won the Australian Championship in Bendigo, Victoria. The main criteria for judging chrysanthemums is form. So the shape of the bloom and whether it conforms to what the standard says. You get something beautiful, all the petals in are laying in the right area and the right place. It's just pleasing to the eye. What do you have to do to grow a champion chrysanthemum? Jim's got the answers. So what's the difference between these plants here and the ones growing in your shade house? Well, the plants I've got in the shade house are, are, are cultured, whereas these ones uh, haven't been cultured. But they're the exact same plants? Exactly the same plant. Now, I want to grow Chrissy's. Where do I start? Well, you really need an ideal climate that has cool nights, <laughs> because that is, uh, develops your buds better. Well, that's what we've got here. We sure have. <laughs> Once the flowers are finished flowering, I cut them down to about eight or nine inches and fertilise them quite heavily, keep them watered and, and try and promote new sucker growth from the ground. It's from those suckers we prefer to take our cuttings because it minimises the risk of uh, soil-borne diseases getting into your plants. We then transfer them into tubes. I use half potting soil and half coarse sand for drainage. A little rooting powder, yes. Then just, we need to water it in. As the plants grow, they go into bigger pots. And I bury the pots to keep the uh, potting soil cool during the day. Around about the end of August, early October, we do what we call a first stop. All that means is you pinch the top out of the plant to promote lateral growth on the plant. As the plant grows, you debud. Because of the time of the year, it's a bit late, and this plant is well advanced from when, from when we would normally do this. Yeah but I can demonstrate how we do, go about doing it so people get the right idea. First up, we only want to take three flowers off this bloom, so we're going to remove these excess laterals quite harshly. So you're leaving this terminal one, yes. obviously the one with the strongest growth on it. One with the strongest growth. And I notice you've got sort of fours, fives, sometimes sixes yes. per plant. Yes, depends on the variety. Now, we want to remove those buds. Now, this can be a bit tricky. What we want to keep is that main bud at the top. So what we're going to do is we're going to pinch them out and then we tie that up. You want to tie that tender for us? So we're left with one flower bud at the top of the litre, each litre. Now, back to the shade house. Now, another reason why they grow so good in the shade house, Tina, compared to those over in the garden is that they're given wind protection and also protection from the rain as they advance. The side panels go up when the plants are about two or three feet high. The roof doesn't go on until the, the plant starts showing colour from the buds. That's when we put the roof on to protect any damage from rainfall. Now, you use a lot of polystyrene. It's yes. What's with the splints? Yes. So we use those to, to straighten the stem and keep the, try and keep the flower bud on the top. You also notice we use discs on some of the singles. Now, that's because the singles have got to be flat out from the button. And because we're showing Bendigo now, um, we have to pack them in polystyrene boxes as we take them over on the, the ferry that goes from Devonport to, to Melbourne. 
Last year we got to uh, Bendigo and not one pedal was damaged. I think it's just something really pleasurable to do. Even when I was working, you come home from work, come down to the chrysanthemums after working, play around with these and all your worries of the day are gone. It's a magnificent hobby. <laughs>